Hello, welcome or welcome back, and happy Halloween if you're watching this on the day it's uploaded. My name is Jack, and in this video, I took on the Long Dark's terrifying Halloween challenge, Escape the Dark Walker. In this challenge, you're being hunted by an invisible eldritch-like creature called the Dark Walker. To beat the challenge, you have to collect 10 diary pages at green campfires, one in each region, while keeping a safe distance from the creature, which cannot be hurt or killed. The Dark Walker can only be deterred by painting glyphs until you eventually have all 10 pages and are able to get to the Ritual Circle in Ash Canyon and banish it for good. You can start in any region, and there's a 15-minute real-time grace period period before the Dark Walker arrives, as well as a 24-hour in-game period before any predators spawn. As you play, the region you're in will fill with toxic fog, and once the region is 100% full, all your food and water will be ruined and your condition will rapidly drop, so it forces you to keep moving. The time of night will stay the same, and the weather will always be clear, aside from the fog slowly getting heavier over time. The thing is, I didn't know all of this, or actually any of it. I knew one day I'd want to play this challenge myself, so I always avoided watching gameplay of it, and I managed to keep it that way until the start of this challenge. So I went in completely blind with a few too many monster energies coursing through my veins for Liquid Courage, deciding to just give it a shot with zero knowledge other than what the game itself gave me, and then after that I do my research and give it a real try. So without further ado, here we go. Since I had no idea what I was doing, it seemed like starting in good old Mystery Lake would be my best bet, so that's where my game began. I spawned in next to a burnt out campfire with some supplies, an energy bar, some water, a sewing kit, a wool toque, and a note that read, on the nature of dark walkers, glyphs of power and their uses, lure, attract the dark walker, ward, a shield, if only for a little while, dispel, push back the choking fog, but only once. Dark walkers spread fear and feed on oblivion. Knowledge will help you defeat the entity for good. So that was real comforting. The last thing I picked up was a can of spray paint, which I'd used to paint the aforementioned glyphs, and then I took off. The starting screen had given me enough information for me to know I needed to seek out the green fires at least, so I checked my map, which is a feature that's enabled in this game mode, and headed in the direction of the fire. I'm gonna keep my first run as brief as possible, since, unsurprisingly, it was nowhere near successful, and if you've played this challenge before, you'll probably find it incredibly painful and frustrating to watch like I am right now while editing. I kept a flare in hand like the scared nerd I was, because I didn't know about the predator grace period, looting one of the fishing huts before entering the camp office. Except it was nighttime, and I realized I couldn't see shit and didn't want to waste matches, so I began blindly feeling around and was so lucky I found a storm lantern straight away. I looted the office, getting to see some of the game's new items for the first time, so that was cool, but I didn't have time to fully check them all out before I was out the door again, following the rails all the way to the first green fire. There I found a hunting rifle, some ammo, a marine flare, an MRE, some combat pants, another can of spray paint, and my first actual diary page. Can't see it, can't fight it, only running. My heart, a black echo in the forest, always hunting for a green fire. Damn, this shit was kinda unsettling. The Dark Walker hadn't even arrived yet, and I was already getting thoroughly freaked out with how easily games scare me. I spent some time at the fire melting down snow, and then continued along the rails, deciding that the least intimidating route to get to the next region would be to go through the ravine. I was almost there when the timer hit zero, and with a terrifying echo, the Dark Walker had arrived. I had no idea what that meant though, spinning in circles and looking around me with so much paranoia, not sure whether I was meant to be seeing something, if it was even close to me, I had no idea what to expect, so all I could do was keep moving, entering the ravine. I also didn't know if I should be conserving my sprint, so I tried to have self-control and walk as much as possible, crossing a tree bridge as the creepiest sounds seemed to rise from the earth around me. And then a warning popped up, showing me that the Dark Walker was way too close to me, and I fled with my heart thumping, managing to get out of the 200 meter range of the danger zone and constantly looking behind me as I tried to stay calm while crossing the bridge. I wasn't sure just how fast the creature was, but judging by the speed at which I managed to get away from it, I hoped I'd be able to maintain a safe distance just by walking. I crossed the Raven Falls trestle, and is probably the least scared I've ever been of maneuvering around the creaky gaps, much more focused on the feeling of being chased. I left the ravine and entered coastal highway, deciding to stop in the first trailer and try out my first glyph. I sprayed a ward on the wall, and then finally let my shoulders relax, doing some inventory and getting my stats up. I was terrified to sleep, not sure how long the ward would last for in-game, but after an hour of rest it seemed like it would stay up for at least four in-game hours, so I slept in a couple more one-hour increments until the timer got low and I had to leave. I began to make my way down the mountain, briefly stopping to loot another trailer before jogging on. The next campfire was way out on the ice, so I had a lot of distance to cover while anxiously whipping around at every tiny sound, but I also came to the assumption that maybe predators just don't spawn in this challenge, so I stopped running with my flare out. I kept getting the shit scared out of me by loon calls, I was so on edge, but I at last made it to my second fire, grabbing two flares, boots, mitts, an energy bar, a tin of coffee, lantern fuel, more spray paint, and a second diary page. The gnashing, the grinding, a thing from the stars, but no beauty sets down from that endless void. Very uncomfortable goosebumps. I cooked some coffee and water, and then slept a few times until the ward timer was low again, and then with a the toxic fog at 31% already, I decided to head across the ice back to the road and cross over to the crumbling highway. The loon sounds and peaceful time of night would have been beautiful if it weren't for the unknown terror lurking around every corner. I put down another ward in a cave so I could get some more rest, and it's painful watching that now knowing how dangerous that was in such a small region with so little distance between me and the dark walker, but it was all a learning experience. I made it to the entrance of the mine, something I was terrified of tackling, especially because I wasn't sure how wards 
bullets worked and whether it would protect me inside the mine, but I sprayed one anyway just in case before I went on. I have no idea how I stayed calm enough to resist sprinting the whole way though, nor how I didn't get cornered at any point, but nevertheless, I made it to Desolation Point. The campfire was pretty far out on the ice in this region too, so I began my walk down the mountain, but a sudden wolf howl snapped me out of my focus, and I realized that my assumption about the lack of predators had been quite wrong. I was so much more stressed now, knowing I not only had to contend with wolves, but also some unseeable wendigo-ass creature, but the show had to go on. I was able to avoid any wolf and bear run-ins, and made it to the Riken ship in good time, finding some clothes, an energy drink, lantern fuel, a flare, a hunting knife, spray paint, and my third diary page, one that left a sickening pit in my stomach. I climbed the tall mountain, but it wormed in the earth below me. There was no escape, not even high above. My delirium has become its feeding ground. Ugh, there was something about that one that was so incredibly hair-raising to me. But I got on with it, making use of the ward with some more sporadic naps, and then I was making my way back across the ice. When I got back to the shore though, it all began to go downhill. Horrifying crunching noises filled my ears, and the proximity warning came back up, the creature blocking my way out of the region, and a wolf blocking my retreat. It felt like some kind of psychological torture. After being tense and on the edge of my seat for over an hour at that point, I almost wanted to just see it, to know what it was and banish the fear of the unknown, but at the same time I was too scared to stand in place. I tried to go back to the ice, but to my absolute horror, I got my myself cornered, crackled dark tendrils creeping into the corners of my vision. I somehow managed to juke it out, getting back on the road, but at that point my heart was pounding too hard to think. I'm not built for scary games, okay? So I was frozen in fear until I finally noticed what seemed like almost lit up footsteps appearing in the snow as the creature walked towards me, and that jump started my legs, giving me the push I needed to circle around the entity and book it back to the exit. I royally fucked that up, however, because in my fear and overwhelming urge to just put as much distance between us as possible, I wasn't paying attention at all and didn't notice I had run right past the trail leading up to the exit. I freaked out and tried to backtrack managing to make it to the very start of that trail, but being so close to the dark walker rapidly drained my condition until I was suddenly yanked off my feet, and then just like that, I was devoured. I called it a night after that, so freaked out that I wasn't even convinced I was going to come back to this challenge, because as much as I enjoy horror movies and like watching other people play scary games, I really do not have a good time playing them myself. But the next night, I was back at my computer, determined to arm myself with knowledge and give it another try. After some thorough research thanks to the wiki page and some lovely walkthroughs, namely Zack and the Fanes, I felt at least a little bit more equipped to give it a second try. I learned that a bleak inlet start would be best as someone who was not mentally equipped to deal with Timberwolves, since the grace period would mean I wouldn't have to deal with them if I was fast. This time I spawned in at the entrance of a cave next to another their burnt out campfire with some supplies and the same instructional starting note. The first fire was over on a bridge by the cannery, so I had a long run across the frozen delta with ice crackling under my feet as I took whatever shortcuts I could, trying to make as much progress as possible before I had to worry about being tracked by a benevolent being once again. I looted a small boat on the way, a car once I made it to the bridge, and I found a parka, matches, and peaches in an overturned trailer before I made it to the green fire. I found a moose hide satchel in the container next to it, which was going to make my journey a lot easier with how little time I'd have to worry about my bag weight and doing inventory management, and then I picked up my first diary page of the run. Do I give in to its will? That may be the only way back. But not yet. Not yet. As long as I paint, I live. I didn't hover by the fire at all, hauling ass all the way back across the river ribbon hills and through sparse trees until I made it into a transition cave with just over three minutes on the timer to spare. I ran through the cave as fast as I could, only looting what was directly in my path so I'd have time to do some inventory management and sleep before the countdown hit zero. I slept for eight hours to regain as much energy as possible, and then when I woke up, the countdown had ended and it was time to get a move on. I entered a forlorn musk egg, immediately putting a lure down. The first time I played, the thought of luring the dark walker to me seemed laughable, but after studying other people's playthroughs, I learned that it was actually really useful to put them down when entering new regions just so you can keep track of how close it is to you, since you hear a loud noise once it reaches the lure if it gets there before it expires. And from my understanding, the dark walker also doesn't spawn in the exact same position it was located in the previous region when you enter a new one. It just spawns the same distance away, but it could be coming from any direction, so putting down a lure helps to assure you aren't walking right towards each other. I got to the second fire in the middle of the map, finding some pretty good loot and waiting till I was ready to keep moving before picking up the second diary page, because I also learned that every time you pick up a new page, the dark walker speeds up. So it's better to wait as long as possible, as long as you don't end up forgetting the page when you leave, which, we'll deal with that later, trust me. The poison in my blood draws it closer, and now that poison fills the air, the formless hunting of form. I ran over to the train tracks and placed another lure, since the other one had expired while I was melting snow, and that way the dark walker would have to detour to the center of the map before continuing to follow me, instead of just being able to head directly at me in a straight line, and then I followed the tracks left all the way to the map's exit. My lure still hadn't been destroyed, so I was pretty confident I had put a good amount of distance between us by the time I entered Broken Railroad. I drank a coffee so I'd have enough energy to run in case wolves started spawning in, and then it was time for another long run across the map, taking a handy shortcut over the collapsed tunnel and keeping a flare on hand just to be safe. This region's fire was past the maintenance yard at the top of a hill that overlooked it, and there was a bunch of ammo in the supply cache, which made me hopeful I'd find a gun at one of the other fires. I heated up some food since my temperature was pretty low, and put down another lure before picking up the third diary page. 
The signs held it at bay, or led it away from me. But who was the glyph maker? Interesting question, but not one I had time to sit and ponder over. I retraced my steps back through the map, paying close attention to listen for distant footsteps in case the Darkwalker and I crossed paths, but I made it back into Forlorn Muskeg without incident, placing another lure at the train tunnel before getting my flare back out and mapping out my route. I needed to skirt around the outside of the map to get to the next transition area, but as I walked, I kept hearing eerie echoes and metallic noises, making it hard for me to keep my cool and avoid sprinting. Everything in me just instinctually wanted to sprint for my life whenever the sounds got louder, even though logically I knew the thing was more interested in the lure than me at that moment. I followed Hat Creek all the way up the mountain and waited for the lure to run out before placing another one, just so I would know where the Dark Walker was at since I didn't know how far it had made it to the other lure before it expired. And then I crawled along the rocky edge of Marsh Ridge with the sounds getting progressively louder as I scaled a couple walls, at last making it to the exit and stepping into Mountain Town. As always, I sprayed another lure, then started my walk across Milton Basin, unable to sprint anymore with my energy fully drained, but I needed to save my energy drink for the rope climbing I'd have to do in the future. So I stopped over in a cave to eat and rest, willing to risk betting that we were far enough apart to sleep a good amount. I slept the first 10 hours uninterrupted, so when I woke up I decided to be brave and try to get another two just to fully get my stamina up, and I knew that if the Dark Walker got too close anyway, I'd be woken up. I did not make it those two extra hours before awful noises shook me out of my sleep, gaining the anxiety affliction as I picked up my bedroll and ran for my life out of the cave and away from the sounds. I felt that the Dark Walker was still slow enough for me to get far away enough while running to the rope that it wouldn't be a danger while climbing it, but that was still way too big of a risk for my comfort levels. I think at that point, I was operating under the assumption that 1. I'm terrible at scary games and gaming under stress in general, so the odds of me completing this challenge were laughable, but two, regardless of that, I was only a fourth of the way to getting all the diary pages, so I didn't feel like I'd lose a painful amount of progress if I were to have a risky move like that go badly. I got lucky, no moose blocking my way to the bottom of the rope, and I started climbing, every muscle in my body tensed. No time to pause in between, I went straight to the second one, holding my breath as the electronic noises inched closer to me, while I also inched so painfully slowly up the last stretch of rope because I was too scared to stop and take a break on the ledge. I was starting to think this would be the end all thanks to my impatience, but I made it to the top with barely any energy to spare and walked on, thankful I was much closer to the fire than I expected when I checked my map. I grabbed a hatchet behind the Paradise Meadows farmhouse, though with how much of this challenge consisted of just running, I wasn't sure I'd have any use for it. And then I rounded a hill and crawled up, and there was the fourth fire. I got a storm lantern, which I was very thankful for since I knew I had some caving to dread, a bit more supplies, and the fourth diary page. Dead and dreaming, my only friend, the faceless moon who won't look away. There is no sunrise on Ganymede. This quote was interesting if you're into theorizing about the Dark Walker's possible lore, not to get too geeky, but I assume the note was referencing Jupiter's icy moon, Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system that also happens to have its own magnetic field, which causes atmospheric auroras. Sounds familiar, right? Not only that, but a future diary page mentions the Dark Walker being a thing from the stars, and goes on to say that no beauty sets down from that endless void. All of that combined had me digging a theory that maybe the Dark Walker is something not of Earth, possibly some nightmarish entity from another planet, even though it doesn't quite give full-on alien vibes. I'm curious to hear if any of of you have some cool theories or lore ideas about it, but moving on. I made it to St. Christopher's Church just as a wolf spotted me, but I got in safely and looted the place, doing some speedy inventory sorting before risking another 10 hours sleep. I wasn't scared awake this time, but I knew I'd have to move quickly to make up for the distance I lost while resting, so I sprayed another lure before heading all the way up the mountain to a transition cave. I wasn't even at the entrance yet when the Dark Walker reached the lure, which was terrifying to say the least, because not only would this be the first cave I'd tackle without the protection of the grace period, but the creature was also a lot closer to me than I liked. I got inside and sprinted for my life, not stopping to loot any Thing, just wanting to get out of the scary darkness, breathing a sigh of relief when I made it into Hushed River Valley. I made sure I wouldn't accidentally cut off future me from getting back to the cave by placing the lure off to the side, then ran down the mountain as fast as possible, needing to build up that distance between us as much as I could. Unfortunately, my animal spawn luck ran out, and the bear was right where I needed to cross, so I had to waste precious time crouching past, and then as soon as I was safe to get up and sprint, I came face to face with a wolf. I scared it off with a flare, not stopping to see whether the bear was alerted by all the commotion, just focusing on getting to the next rope at Mini Falls Vista. I climbed my way down, grateful the lure hadn't been reached yet, and I crossed a frozen river before I made it to the fifth fire at Twin Sisters Falls, where I found a revolver. That was a turning point for me. Now that I felt more protected against predators and had reached the halfway point with 5 out of 10 pages, I was suddenly a lot more scared of making a stupid move and losing this run, so I knew I really had to focus up. The fifth page read, I crept upon the nameless city, stars in my eyes, but those eyes no longer see the world, just a choking mist. Over the horizon, that is where I escape. The notes felt like they were getting more hopeless, or rather more discombobulated, but that felt understandable, given the assumption that whoever authored them had been stuck in the same hellish chase that I was. I walked a bit off to the side to leave another lure, since the first had expired, then loaded my gun, carefully making my way back through the region on high alert for predators. Back up the rope, being safe and resting for a bit on the ledge this time before climbing up the rest of the way, then I drank a coffee, and as soon as I rounded the corner, I ran into the same wolf as before. I was hoping to sneak around it, not wanting to risk alerting the bear with a gunshot, but I didn't want to take a huge detour, and we ended up close enough that it got aggressive, so I shot at it twice 
guys and managed to scare it off long enough for me to get away. Almost immediately though, I came across the bear, which I guess had heard the gun as I feared, so I began to very carefully creep past it, clutching my mouse like a lifeline. I did succeed, but I also sprained my wrist in the process, and I had no bandages on me to heal myself, and the lure had just expired, so I had to just keep moving. When I was finally outside the cave, I took some painkillers and harvested some extra clothing, crafting some bandages and healing myself up before it was time for another scary run through the winding tunnels. I placed another lure once I was back in Mountain Town, then ran all the way back down the mountain, scaring off a wolf before I ran through the woodlot, then across the bridge and into the heart of the town. A wolf spotted me pretty quick, though I didn't see it due to the heavy fog, so I just let it follow me from a distance while I walked. The sound of the dark walker reaching the lure jump scaring the hell out of me. That meant it was about to be pretty close to me since it could just beeline straight through the map, so I didn't have time to go into the Orca gas station at all, heading straight up to the little park shelter. The wolf had gotten distracted by the rabbits outside, so I was able to quickly loot it and get a fire going so I could warm up a bit, but the timer was showing I only had 14 minutes before the toxic gas was at 100%, so I had to keep moving. I drank an energy drink and made it down the rope, following the signs in the thick fog to find the next climbing area as the air around me began to carry the hushed whispers of the creature again. I had to skirt around a wolf once more, and realized I wasn't able to drink another energy drink at the bottom of the rope since my current one was still active, but the sounds were getting closer, so I started climbing without thinking. To my horror though, the energy boost ran out when I was nearly at the top, and my climbing slowed to a snail's pace, and I knew I wasn't going to make it if I kept climbing, so in my panic I decided my best option was to climb back down. I had barely begun to do that when I lost my grip and plummeted, my heart doing the same, but I managed to catch myself and lower myself the rest of the way with shaking hands. As soon as I hit the ground, I was gulping down the second energy drink, leaving me with only one more and a stim, but I didn't feel like I had another choice if I wanted to get away, especially with the fog building. I made it across the tree bridge and followed the path of the mountain as fast as I could with echoey droning noises creeping their way up from the earth, and the walk through the ravine felt like it took a lifetime, but I made it to the next cave. My energy was too low to sprint more, and I knew I had to be very careful with only one energy drink and stim left, so I walked through the cave, every echo from crumbling rocks making me jump, but I made it out and into Mystery Lake. I was right next to the trapper's cabin, so I decided to stop in there, looting the whole place before spraying a ward so I could rest without being too anxious. I set my rest time to 12 hours, even though I knew the ward would expire and the dark walker would wake me up before then, and I was right, getting woken up after 6 hours when the 200 meter countdown began. But I still wanted to do some inventory management, so I placed another ward and then slept for a couple more hours before working up the courage to leave the trailer. I put a lure down as soon as I left, since I wasn't sure what direction the creature would be coming from and it would buy me at least a tiny bit of time while I ran away, but I'd barely been running for a minute when the dark walker reached the lure. I cut through the forest, winding in between hills until I made it back to the railroad, and next to the derailment was the sixth fire, as well as a hunting rifle. I already had the revolver, but having the extra protection against bears would be nice, so I grabbed it too. I napped for a couple hours under the protection of the ward, then picked up page number six. Can't see it, can't fight it, only running. My heart, a black echo in the forest, always hunting for a green fire. I also received a badge for the achievement of getting six pages, which was cool. I left the railroad and walked off into the forest, crossing over the river as a shortcut to get to the trailers by the dam. I looted them quickly and then sat down to eat, but I gave myself food poisoning from a can of condensed milk, which sucked. I took antibiotics right away, but other than that all I could do was rest and hope I could make it the full ten hours needed for recovery before the dark walker caught up. Spoiler, I couldn't, and I got woken up with just an hour left to rest, so I had to keep running. I crossed over into the ravine and put down a lure as soon as I did, then booked it through the forest, the dark walker reaching the lure as I crossed the tree bridge, so I knew it was scary. Really close. I had to stay calm and walk across the trestle, and then I sprinted to the tunnel. I kind of forgot how small of an area it was, so I decided to get that last hour of recovery sleep needed, which was so risky now that I'm looking back, but I managed it and healed my food poisoning, so I guess it was worth it. And then I was in Coastal Highway, spraying Allure and getting my gun out in preparation for the usual crazy amount of wolves. I switched between my revolver and rifle as I walked through certain areas, depending on when I was at higher risk of running into a bear versus wolves, and as I made it to the road, the dark walker reached my lure again. It was further away than I thought, but still closer than I'd like. The fire was out on an island, into the middle of the ice, so I at least had lots of open space to put distance between us. I got some great gear there and cooked a ton of coffee, because I was quickly learning you could never have too much in this challenge, and then I napped for two hours before picking up the seventh page. The gnashing, the grinding, a thing from the stars, but no beauty sets down from that endless void. God, I love the writing in this game. What I didn't love though was me not paying full attention while running out on the ice, and not realizing how close I was getting to the ocean, and when I did notice, I panicked and got stuck on a ledge, and then ended up falling through. At that point, I was pretty devastated, worried that this could mean a failed run, because I was so conditioned from playing interloper that in my head, that level of hypothermia equaled death. But I obviously wasn't going to trash the run over that, not with seven pages under my belt. The show had to go on. So I got back out onto the ice, much more carefully this time, and ran to the waterfront cottages. I was so painfully tense with my condition dropping and so many hours of gameplay on the line, and that panic definitely clouded my judgement, because looking back I would have done a lot of things differently, but it is what it is. I went into the second cottage and started a fire, adding coal to get the temperature much higher, then placed a ward. I crafted and cooked a couple of birch bark teas, drinking the first one as an initial boost to get my temperature up 
up a bit and help with condition improvement while I napped for an hour. Then with my heart finally calming down a bit, I realized it would probably be a good idea to take off all my frozen clothes so I'd warm up faster, and then I napped for another hour until the boost from the tea expired. I searched the cabinet next to me and found some dry clothes that I could at least put on in the meantime, then drank the second birch bark tea and slept for another hour, but I was so torn. The only way I could treat my hypothermia was to remain above freezing for 12 hours, of which I had 8 left. And I knew that if I went back outside then with only 2 items of clothing on, I'd surely drop back below freezing, so that was risky. But it was also risky to stay inside, ward or no ward, so I weighed my options and decided that if I was going to be cutting it close with the dark walker either way, I'd rather do it while not having to worry about getting frostbite. So I put my bedroll back down and set myself up for 6 hours of sleep. Obviously the dark walker was there as soon as I woke up, so I put another ward down just to give myself time to think, because it's quite hard to think clearly with those horrifying footsteps thundering across the earth toward you. I slept for an hour to give my clothes more time to dry, then started putting the ones back on that weren't frozen anymore. I still had 4 more hours to stay above freezing to finally cure my hypothermia since I got woken up early, so I slept for another 2, putting on some more clothes that had dried, slept for one more hour, and then with the ward timer so low, I had no choice but to keep moving. I downed an energy drink and then I was off, snow crunching underneath heavy footsteps and otherworldly screeches filling my ears as I had had no option but to run towards and then past the dark walker to get back to the road. I ran between the rocks and made it into crumbling highway, putting down another lure and hoping with everything in me it would be enough to put a forgivable amount of distance between us where I'd have a wolf encounter here. I was barely off the road when the lure was broken, lighting a fire under my ass, but when I got into the coal mine, something weird happened. The dark walker arrival countdown had suddenly appeared on my screen and I was so frustrated I could have yelled. So between this run and my first one, I had actually attempted two others, but they were so short that they weren't worth including because only a few minutes into each one, I had gone into a cave and the timer had restarted its like this. Both times I had thought, no big deal, it's so early in this run, I'll just restart. The second time it happened, I restarted the whole game to be safe, and since I had gotten this far in this run, I figured that I'd fixed it, but I guess I was wrong. This time I kept on playing as normal for a little bit, just in case the timer was just a visual glitch and nothing else had changed, but after a while it became clear that the Dark Walker had in fact reset, and I was so frustrated. I tried leaving the game and reloading my save at the cave entrance, I tried closing and reopening the game, I tried googling the bug, but nothing came up, or at least nothing that I could find, but I really, really didn't want to give up on this run so so far in, especially if there's a chance that I'd get this far into another one and then have the same issue happen. So I decided the most fair thing to do would be to stop, put my bedroll down, and just sleep in past time until the timer was over. That way I wouldn't have an unfair advantage of making a bunch of progress while I was completely safe, and I would wait it out until the predator grace period was over too. This worked okay until I realized there was a big flaw in my plan. The toxic fog. In between the sleeping and passing time, the fog timer came up, giving me 4 minutes until the fog was at 100%. In that moment I realized how bad I messed up. It would be one thing if I only had to cross through this region region once, because I could escape before the fog got me. But I knew I'd have to come back to return to Coastal Highway again, and knowing that, I figured that was it for this run. I decided to keep going for as long as I could, but I was convinced the fog would end up being the reason for the run ending. I left the mine then to at least give myself a fighting chance on the way back in, and waited out the rest of the arrival timer just outside until the Dark Walker had spawned in again. From later experience, I was pretty sure this bug didn't start it back at its base speed, just to be clear because that thing still felt fast as fuck. I'm really sorry the bug happened though, I was getting so excited about completing this challenge and felt I had a pretty solid run, so I was super disappointed and I'm sure you are too watching this. I'm really curious to know if anyone else has encountered this bug and if there's a fix for it, but regardless, let's continue on. I sprayed a lure and then I was on my way, the same clattering and echoing footsteps already spiking my heart rate again. And then I fucked up, again. So as someone who has primarily played on Pilgrim while learning how to play where predators don't attack, and then jumped straight to interloper where guns don't exist, I haven't had time to get much experience with the weapons in this game. So I pointed my rifle directly at a wolf working under the assumption that it would just scare it off the same way the revolver seemed to, but I was quite wrong. The wolf was on me right away, and I thankfully managed to fight it off with minimal injuries, but damn, I felt like I couldn't catch a break. I promise I've since educated myself at least a little bit more on gun mechanics thanks to many incidents during this challenge, but that was rough. I healed myself up, then kept on, only just hitting the ice when my lure was broken. I had a lot of miles of ice to cover, but at least I got to enjoy the pretty sounds of the waves while trying not to dwell on my impending doom. At last I reached the familiar green smoke next to the Riken, quickly sorting through my inventory to make sure I was able to be light on my feet with how much the dark walker speed had increased by then. I made some more water and coffee, had two short naps, and then sprayed another lure before picking up the eighth diary page. I climbed the tall mountain, but it warmed in the earth below me. There was no escape, not even high above. My delirium has become its feeding ground. It doesn't get any less creepy the second time around. Then it was back across the expanse of ice, retracing my footsteps while anxiously watching the fog timer close in on me. The dark walker had reached the lure when I was almost back at the mines, so the distance made me feel a bit more safe, at least if safe is even a word you can use when describing this challenge. But then you know what's 
super funny, silly, quirky thing happened, the fucking timer glitch came back when I re-entered the mine. Why? I was so fed up. Dealing with it once was one thing, but twice. And not only that, but with the fog timer so low, I didn't think I could really do the same thing to keep it fair. Except I realized with the timer bugging out, it had also bugged out the fog this time and set it back down to zero, despite it not affecting it the first time, and I was torn. That was half bad, because it gave me the unfair advantage of not having to worry about the state I'd left Coastal Highway in, but at the same time, it was half good, because I actually had a chance to save the run now, as much as you can save a completely bugged run, I guess. So I did the same thing as the last time it bugged, sleeping and passing time until the timer ended, and I was once again able to travel with danger looming over me. I had no idea the f**kery that awaited me, because apparently the glitch had done a number on things other than the timer, which I found out when I was suddenly barked at by an invisible wolf. I don't have great eyesight to begin with, so I was gaslighting myself at first, assuming I just wasn't seeing it, but when I shot off my gun and still didn't see anything move, I figured I was dealing with another glitch. Being charged at by absolutely nothing confirmed that, so all I could do was shoot and run, just wanting out of that completely cursed region, so fed up with everything. I napped for an hour outside the transition zone, then held my breath when I crossed back over into Coastal Highway, crossing my fingers for the loading screen and not trigger the bug again, and I was so relieved when it was all clear. And I can confirm, just so you aren't waiting for it for the rest of the video, that the timer bug did not show its face again for the rest of the challenge, thank f That does not mean the laugh the game was having at me was over, no, not even close, but that's for future me. Another lure, and then I walked along the edge of the ice until I got to the town area, a wolf trailing behind me as I headed up the mountain trail until I scared it off with a shot. Unfortunately, this alerted a bear around the corner to my existence, so I had to take the long way around to avoid it charging at me, but I got it off my trail and made it to the next mine entrance without any more wildlife encounters. I didn't stop to loot much, since the Darkwalker had gotten to my lure pretty quick earlier, but I did thankfully find another stim before I exited the mine and entered Pleasant Valley, spraying a lure as usual. I ran down the mountain and followed the snowy trail for a long while until I reached the main road, crossing it and cutting through a forest and over a frozen river, and I was in the middle of a snowy field when my lure was broken. I made it across another river and lots of barren farmland, scaring off a wolf and reaching the ninth fire. I did a little bit of speed cleaning, then picked up the second to last diary page. A pale river turned in on itself, a rush of blood to my head. Only the crooked path leads me away. I couldn't even believe I only had one page left to go, but I couldn't celebrate just yet, and it's a good thing I didn't, because a wolf attacked me and I died. Kidding, I'm so hilarious, I know, just wanted to see if you are paying attention. Also kidding. Not kidding about the wolf attack though, that shit sucked, especially with the lag that I'd begun to experience since the second timer bug, and a second one coming at me before I'd even processed the first. What also sucked was I only had one bandage, which I had to allocate to my profusely bleeding head, so my sprained wrist would have to be dealt with later, and I also didn't have any antiseptic, so I had to hope I'd either find some or hunt down enough lichen to craft a wound dressing as I went. After I reoriented myself, I continued over the farmlands, giving the local bear a wide berth as I passed through the birch forest and crossed over another frozen river, thankful for the map as I navigated half blindly in between the forested hills. I crossed a bridge and scaled some rocks for a little shortcut back onto the main snowy trail, following that all the way deep into the mountains. I collected two pieces of lichen from a tree, though I'd still need one more for the wound dressing, and then I made it to the bottom of the rope that would take me out of the region, and I had to deal with my sprained wrist problem. My only option was to quickly craft a bandage, even as the all too familiar crunching and electronic hums began to fill the air, and my heart thumped along to the beat of the tense drum as I banished myself up and jabbed myself with a stim before beginning the climb. I was only halfway up when the 200 meter proximity warning came up, and you can bet I was tasting my own heartbeat at that point, gritting my teeth and willing my guy to climb faster. I made it up and ran like hell, making it to the exit after which my game froze for approximately two minutes, a time period during which I was convinced I was going to be inside the Dark Walker's stomach when I unfroze, but I came out the other end in Timberwolf Mountain, thankfully, and began trucking it through the ravine. I sprayed what I hoped was my last lure, even though the blood curdling sounds were already much too close for comfort, and the lure wasn't even a quarter of the way expired when it was broken. I made it through the hills to the mountain, Near's hut, and to my relief, inside the med kit I found some much needed antiseptic and was able to clean my wolf bite. I didn't have any time to rest at all, so I drank a coffee and immediately continued on, running across Crystal Lake and scaling the hillside until I could see the fire in the distance. I had to skirt around a wolf, but it was much more interested in its prey than me, and I finally made it to the very last fire. I picked up a flare gun and a bunch of ammo, although I was hopeful I wouldn't have any use for it this close to the end of the challenge, and then I did the thing I had dreaded all along. I forgot the note. The tenth and final note. I went off on my merry way, none the wiser, so stressed over how much was on the line that I didn't even have an inkling that something was off. At least until I had placed a lure, all happy with myself, and made it halfway through Echo Ravine, and then it hit me. I checked my journal, and it felt like someone dropped a bowling ball down my esophagus, and I immediately whipped around, sprinting back up the ravine, realizing that lure could be my downfall, because depending on how close the Dark Walker already was, it was possible we were about to cross paths closer than we ever had before. And sure enough, that fear came true. I began climbing the hill to return the fire, and the proximity counter came up, but I had to keep moving, skirting around the best that I could. And then you want to know what I did? In my panic, with eyesight equivalent to that of a f***ing mole, I grabbed a piece of birch bark instead of the diary page. And then I went through the most harrowing experience of trying to juke out some paranormal entity so I could get back to the ravine, placing a new lure and running like I had never run before. I had only just rounded the corner in the ravine when the lure broke, so while I was stuck winding my way between giant rock walls, I knew that mother was beelining at me with the speed of a man who had something to prove. I made it to the very last exit I'd ever need to go through in this challenge and went to do just that, and then the game crashed. I wish I'd been mic'd up with the 
the choice words that came out of my mouth at that moment, but little did I know that would be the biggest blessing in disguise, because had the game not crashed, who knows how deep into Ash Canyon I would have gotten before realizing my horrendous birch bark slip up. I literally only realized that happened right now while rewatching all the footage to write the script for this video, and I swear my jaw hit the floor. Past me had no idea how bad I messed up. Obviously, I restarted my computer and then relaunched the game, terrified to see where my last autosave was, and to my dismay, I was all the way back in Pleasant Valley circa wolf attack. I went through the same motions again, bandaging up my head for the blood loss but not having antiseptic or another bandage for my sprained wrist, and I ran the same long route back to the base of the rope. Except this time, I ended up in another wolf struggle. I wasn't sure what triggered this one, since I thought I was far away enough that shooting out the revolver shouldn't have triggered the wolf's charge, but regardless, I was tacked again as I didn't have time to reload, and I was down more than half my condition by the time I fought it off, which meant I was also in serious need of even more bandages or I was gonna bleed out fast. I crafted two bandages on the spot, patching up one sprained wrist and my bleeding head, but I didn't have any spare cloth for the third and I didn't want to hang around the area longer than necessary with wolves lurking about, so I continued on. My health was just dropping way too low for comfort, so I hit myself with another stim and took advantage of the unlimited sprint, except at a broken down cabin, you'll never guess it, I was attacked again. Luckily I didn't get any major injuries from this wolf since I took it down really quick because it had been damaged by a bullet, but goddamn my poor heart needed a break. I wasn't sure if I just had a really bad luck or if it was actually good luck for me to have been able to survive this long through so many mishaps. I collected the lichen again, but that last wolf attack had really slowed me down, so the Darkwalker sounds were already much closer than the last time, and I hadn't even crafted another bandage yet, which was gonna require harvesting one of my clothing items this time. So in desperation, I checked the building next to the rope, hoping with everything in me that I'd find a bandage or a piece of cloth, but no such luck. So I decided to take my chances with a very tense rope climb later on, and crawled into the prepper cache, spraying a ward. I looted the room, finding what felt like everything other than what I actually needed, so I broke down a pair of socks I'd found in the locker, crafting two bandages and healing the room remaining sprained wrist. I still didn't have any way of treating the wolf bite infection risk, so I'd have to deal with that later, but at least I wasn't going to bleed out anymore. And then I forced myself to get on with it, despite knowing what a terrifying few minutes I had ahead of me, drinking an energy drink and leaving the bunker. As soon as I was out, I threw myself onto the rope, just barely making it to the ledge as the proximity warning came in again. I knew the dark walker would be faster than I was while climbing, especially since I had to pause for a second and recharge my stamina, so I put down a ward and waited, psyching myself up and jumping back on the rope. As soon as I was out of range of the ward, it was on my heels again, and I almost felt like I could feel it breathing down my neck in real life as I tried to quickly put down a lure just to buy myself a tiny bit more time as I maneuvered around it and stuck myself with another stim. I felt like I had wings as I flew down the valley again, the creatures roaring in my ears, spraying another lure and making the most of that stim as I sprinted for my life through the forest to the hut. The dark walker reached the stim at about the same time as it did the first time I'd run through there, so I was equally speedy with my looting, but this time the antiseptic didn't spawn, which was bad. My hope was that I'd be able to make it safely to the end game before the infection risk did too much damage on my condition, because after how close I was cutting it at the final fire last time, I knew I didn't have time to hunt for like and craft wound dressing. I made it back to the fire and oh my god, there in the med kit was a bottle of antiseptic. I was so relieved. I doused the bite in it and picked up the final note, too tense to stop and read it, but I found the final quote on the wiki, don't worry. I discarded the far-sighted mask and only bone remains. The gate is closed. Will it come for me now? And well, there was only one way to find out. I placed the lure off to the side and made the run through Echo Ravine for what I hoped was actually the last time. Entering Ash Canyon filled me with a new intense determination, so close to the end I could almost taste it, spraying what I hoped was the final lure and drinking another energy drink. I took a short cut down the mountain, and judging by the map, I had a far way to go in a territory very heavily populated by predators, but there was no way I was letting anything stop me now. I ran across the bitter marsh, weaving between the burnt remains of trees, the dark walker reaching the lure as I passed a waterfall and followed a frozen river deeper into the heart of the region. I scared off a couple wolves with a gunshot, downing my very last energy drink and making one last sprint through the trees until at long last, the neon green ritual circle came into view. I looked at it in disbelief before crossing over the threshold, pulling out a spray can for the last time and painting the vanishing glyph. The sounds that followed were bone chilling, earth shaking footsteps coming at me at a stomach twisting pace as I whipped around, trying desperately to place the direction the noises were coming from. Eventually, the glowing green footsteps made it to the edge of the circle, and I was yanked off my feet, my heart catching in my throat, scared I somehow did something wrong, but then, it was over. I had finally banished the Dark Walker. The relief I felt in that moment was unreal, able to relax for the first time in hours, knowing that fighting to survive through all of that had been worth it. Bugs and glitches aside, I am so happy I made myself stick through it, because y'all know how I am with even remotely scary games. And sure, most of what makes this challenge as freaky as it is is the sound design, they did an incredible job with it, but it's still a hair-raising time and I'm surprised I made it to the end. I'd like to thank my cat for backseat gaming, couldn't have done it without him, absolute legend. I would love to finish off this video by saying, hey, let me know if you want me to give this challenge a second try, but I'm gonna keep it real with you 
you, I never want to deal with the Dark Walker again. I may be an enjoyer of horror, but it genuinely just stresses me out so bad playing tense challenges like this, and I prefer watching other people tackle them instead, so I'll leave this one to the much braver experts out there. Thank you so much for sticking through to the end if you did, despite the less than thrilling technical issues. It was pretty frustrating, because in the many years I've played this game, I've never dealt with it lagging or crashing before or since playing this challenge, so I'm not really sure what was up with that, but it's done now, so all is well. I hope you enjoyed regardless and got at least a little bit scared along with me, and let me know if there are any other games or the Long Dark related videos you'd like to see from me. Thanks so much for the love and support as always, I hope you have or had a wonderfully spooky Halloween, and I will see you in my next video.